Hokshi. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Acadia Talk Show Call tonight. Uh, today being the 29th day of June, uh, 2011, on the uh, Eastern States area. And um, we have Frank with us tonight. We're going to cover some good issues of updates on the uh, canons and the cognitive law. And I uh, hope everybody's got uh, their computers up online and ready to go. And with that, Frank, uh, we'll turn it over to you since we're, we've got a, some good topics to cover. Uh, and if we need to do the reminders a, a little bit later once we start question and answers, I can do that. So, okay. Uh, welcome, welcome, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us. And Frank, take it away. Uh, thanks, Terry. Look, uh, thank you to all those that are listening tonight live on TalkShoe. And just to let you know that the call will be uh, also loaded not only onto TalkShoe but onto University of Eucadia website. That's university.eucadia.info. And also thank you to those that will be listening to this call later in downloading it from either TalkShoe or from the university site. This is Kerry, as as we we spoke earlier, um, I want to thank that um, Terry. We have Terry back on tonight to host. And it's fantastic. Uh, it's much easier for me <laughs> to talk than try to also uh, look at how to manage the uh, interface. And of course, last week I wasn't able to get onto a number of folk who wanted to to speak. So tonight, hopefully, on uh, I think it's Star Eight. I think it's Star Eight, not Hash Eight, but Star Eight. For those that want to uh, uh, speak, uh, I look forward to answering calls live in an hour where we do a QA. and a And also, if you've got a question, just remember, just type in, in capitals, question, and then your question, and I look forward to answering each and every question that you might have on the call tonight. The other thing is too, uh, if there are topics that you want me to raise, uh, I know that a number of you have sent through requests. I'm happy to incorporate your requests into the topics these weeks and make sure that we cover areas that you uh, find are important, information you want more information on, just let us know and uh, send us an email and I'll, I'll certainly see that we can try and answer and incorporate your request for information. And indeed, if you want to hear more from some of the people who call in, like for example, Ron, who's been doing some excellent, excellent work on a number of areas, not the least being tax. And of course, Greg on the area of elocution as well in a number of areas. So thank you. Well, as we said, there are a number of important topics I want to cover tonight. Uh, the theme tonight still is cognitive law. There are a large number of additions and updates on cognitive law. I also want to, uh, to talk to you about some of the big ticket issues. I know that many of you are frustrated and remain frustrated at uh, what you would like to see ready with Eucadia, in particular the money system, in particular the registers, the legal sites. And I want to bring you up to speed on some of the important big ticket items so that you get a, a perspective of the timing of things. Uh, are we already missed times and we can't meet those deadlines? But what are we dealing with over the next six months in terms of major historical events? So I want to cover those because I do believe that seeing the bigger picture and, and understanding what is in train and in store, and in particular because we need your help and support, that it gives you a sense and perspective of what is coming and why. So I'm going to start on that first, on the bigger ticket items first. Before I do, uh, you might want to call up a browser and to log on to the one-heaven.org site, that's one-heaven.org site. And when you do, uh, I ask you to go to Positive Law. And when you go and click on the link there under Divine Canon Laws on Positive Law, I ask you just to change the word positive to cognitive. That's C-O-G-N-I-T-I-V-E. And if you just change that to cognitive law, but keep everything else the same, you'll see the index of cognitive law will appear with the updates. I give that link to you now, 
because I would love those of you listening, if you want to browse through while I'm speaking, please browse through and have a look. We'll be coming back to that in a few minutes. Well, considering I'm going to start by talking about some of the big ticket items coming up this year and why, I think it is actually worthwhile just recapping what we spoke of last week. Last week, as, as indeed a number of weeks have been, saw a number of topics from a broad range. But last week, we did spend quite a bit of time talking about the issue of visualization and in particular, our position in terms of the earth, the sun, climate change, earth changes, uh, whether Elenin is a star, uh, whether it is going to be a potential calamitous event, uh, whether we are going to, to deal with, with major problems. And the point of last week in raising those was to put into perspective the power of our minds, both individually and collectively, to affect the world around us. There's a very old saying from a fellow by the name of Napoleon Hill, a man that was influenced by and influenced Dale Carnegie. He, he said a quote, what the mind can perceive uh, and believe it can achieve. Please forgive me if I've paraphrased it wrongly, but essentially saying that if you can think of something and if you believe that that, in fact, is something that is possible, then it is, in fact, achievable. And what we are talking about last week was that in the bigger scheme of things, what we have lacked as a species is a big idea, an idea that forces us to think collectively and think in a positive sense, not merely in a making repair for our damage. And that big idea that I shared with you was bringing life to Mars in the form of creating an artificial moon. The reason I raise that is that whilst we may or may not believe that such things are possible, in the scheme of things, when we're looking at the sun, if Elenin is a brown dwarf, or even if Elenin was not the issue, if something else was coming in, it, was, it would be coming into this solar system because our sun wants it to come in. If there's change happening on the earth, and there is at an unprecedented rate, it's happening because the earth and the sun want it to happen. And at the same vein as, as these things are happening for a reason, I shared with you the importance and the history of the covenant, Pactum de Singularis Calum, the covenant of one heaven, as being the first time, the first time that men and women have come to the sun as equals, as an agreement, a binding where we can do something for the sun and the sun can do something for us. We can bring life to a planet that encourages more comets with hydrogen to come and sustain life for our sun. And in return, the sun takes even greater care for our survival and our prosperity. This is part of the covenant. This is a promise. Well, in that line, the key theme of last week and the theme that I want to start again with this week is the aspect of hope. What is the one thing that those that are in power wish to remove from us, to take from us? It is the concept of hope. On the one hand, they say they want to give us hope, but in reality, what they want is to take it from us. The reason Obama placed so much emphasis on hope was that when he failed, our hope would be dashed. And that's exactly what he did. Obama deliberately and consciously, with his mind as deliberately and consciously, chose hope so that it could be dashed against the rocks of their artificially created disasters. And that's exactly what they did. And we're going to talk about cognitive trauma in a moment when we get into cognitive law. So hope is a very, very important thing. It's essentially 
It's an essential component when we're faced with court, trial, real poverty, and many of you are facing that on a, on a daily basis, having no money. When your children are taken from you, when your friends, when your siblings, when people are thrown in prison for the most trivial of issues. Hope is something that helps us get through all of that and it's something they want to take away from us. So maybe the hope of the level of uh, Mars and the planet and the sun and the earth is beyond us at the moment and I understand that. But let's look at some of the timings of this year, what we're proposing to do and why we're proposing to do it and the historical context of these things and the hope that rises from these things because they are worthy elements of history in line of those things that you read as a child, those things that you heard in books, you saw in films. We are witness to these moments of history and there's a reason for it. Well, a few weeks ago, on June the 12th, on the day of illumination, on the day of the Holy Spirit, on the day they call the Feast of the Pentecost, a number of you wrote two documents to the Vatican, to the Jesuits and to the Franciscans. And in that was the lightborn record of Joseph Ratzinger and a one-page double-sided document of a public and a private writ, a writ of probate and a writ of mandamus. And this heralded, when it was sent, the official end of the Master Trust of Trust. This is the trust of all trusts. We've mentioned before that Unum Sanctum was the first trust, but it wasn't the first testamentary trust. The first testamentary trust was Romanus Pontifex, the Roman Pontiff, 1455. And what was sent on June the 12th was a document that said that as we were given our birthright from the beginning of time, as demonstrated in the the uh, documents and, and the scripture of Genesis Adam and Eve the story of the first men and women where we were given by God the unique collective awareness the creator a dominion right of use over all on this planet earth and whilst it might have been argued that we lost our way and that custodians appointed themselves or a claim to have been appointed in our stead that in June the 12th we stated categorically and unequivocally that that trust had fulfilled its promise had fulfilled its issue and was no longer valid the trust had been dissolved the trust is dissolved and and as we gave the uh, pontiff Ratzinger his live-born record the office of the Roman pontiff which is intimately linked to that trust also has been dissolved. Now it doesn't mean that the, the role of Bishop of Rome or the Vicar of Christ or the leader of the Catholic Church loses any of that. It merely means that the fiduciary role, the trust role, has ended. Now do I expect them to honour that? No, I don't. Do I expect them to acknowledge this as a moment of history? Yes, I do. In fact, they have acknowledged. We have had now not one but multiple receipts and acknowledgement that the letters were uh, received and were acknowledged to have been received by the Vatican as well as by the Jesuits. That in itself shows that they understand the significance of what this represented to them, to the world and to the history of our species. But will they change? No, they won't. They will not give an inch. They can't. Because their whole world depends on the existence of the Master Trust. So what do we do? What comes next? Well, as many of you know, as many of you have been waiting to hear, Eucadia is not simply law. It's not simply ideas. It's not simply uh, teaching and suggestions. It also is a complete, and I mean complete and comprehensive global financial system. 